Hi, in this particular chapter, we'll be talking about a very simple TCP load balancer. A TCP load balancer is basically a layer 4 load balancer and a layer 4 load balancer knows nothing about the client apart from its client IP address. So we'll be creating a front end service, which will basically be an IP address and it will be just forwarding packets to the back end service. So again, we'll be creating another instance group and this instance group will be adding to the back end service. So we'll start off by creating an instance template as usual. And this instance template will have this particular startup script. And all that this particular startup script will do is it will get hold of the metadata instance name and it'll just print it in the index.html page. And that's all that it's going to do. Now this particular startup script, I'll give in the description below. So you can just go paste this in your instance template. So once we've created the instance template, we'll create an instance group out of this. And this instance group we will add to the particular back in service. So let's go ahead and let's see how this is done. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we'll create an instance template as usual. So let's create an instance template. Again, it's going to be an E2 micro. And it's going to have a standard persistent disk. Let's click on select. And again, let's allow the HTTP traffic. And finally, let's add the startup script. So I'll be adding this particular startup script. Now, once again, this script I'll give in the description below. So you can just check that out. And let's click on create. And finally, let's go and create an instance group. And this time what we'll do is we'll create a minimum of two instances in the instance group. Let's choose the instance template that we just created. And here, let's go and make the maximum number of instances as three and below and the minimum number of instances as two. And let everything else be default. And let's also add a health check. And let's click on create. Okay, so our instance group is created. So let's log into the instance group. And here you can see that there are two instances within my instance group. So if I open any one of them, you can see that it displays the instance name that is this particular instance name over here. So let's go and create a load balancer now. Let's click on create load balance and this time we'll be creating a very basic simple load balancing. So let's just have it for one single region again it's from the internet to the virtual machine and the backend service remains the same. Let's click on continue. And here you need to give a name for your load balancer. Let's just call this as load balancer. And the region here is important. So the region should contain the instance group. So let's click on US central one because that's where our instance groups have been created. And let's choose the instance group that we have created. Let's click on done. And again, the only thing you need to choose here is basically the health check. Let's create a new health check for this. Let's create a new health check and let's Go to the front end now and you can add a name over here though it's not a mandatory field and here you need to add the port number so since it's a H, uh, so since it's a web server let's add port 80 and click on done and that's the only thing you need to do let's click on create now and let's wait for the ip address to be created okay our load balancer has been created let's open this load balancer and let's get the IP address and let's try to log into our instance. And once you connect to your IP address, you can see that it logs into a particular instance. Now, if you keep refreshing the page, it might also connect to the other instance. Now, if you always want your inst IP address to be connected to one particular instance, what you need to do is you need to go back to your load balancer. You can go to your backend configuration. And here you need to set the session affinity to the client IP address. Now, if you, so if you do that, your IP would always be connected to one particular instance of that particular instance group. So that's it for this particular lecture. I hope this was useful. If you have any doubts, please paste the questions below. So that's it for this one. I will see you in the next.